What is going on guys? In this video, we're going to go over five secret tips that PVPers won't tell you that will definitely make you better in PVP. These are tips that really only high level players know and utilize to their advantage the most. While some may seem rather trivial, they have a lot more depth and impact than you may think. These five tips with enough practice will take your gameplay from average to above average in PVP. But before we get started, I just wanted to give a big shout out to all my Patreon supporters. You guys are so very generous and I'm thankful for your support. For you new guys here, if you guys have been enjoying my content and want to give back, Patreon is by far the best way. For my highest tiers, we have some amazing perks like personalized build help for me, but I also do giveaways ever so often. The next giveaway I'm doing is 5,000 crowns on the launch day of the Waking Flame DLC on console. The link is down in the description below. Any support is greatly appreciated, but honestly, just you guys watching my videos supports me more than you guys realize. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So to start this video off, we're going to look at the most trivial and then we're going to go more complex later on the, into the video. But for the first tip we have is tab targeting. Now I have to give a little bit of backstory on this. So me, Nice, and Pink were doing Dragon Star Arena. And we were talking about tips that new players may not know or even realize even exist. And this is the first one that really came up. And I don't use, utilize this the most that I should. But only really high level players will use this or even know about it. Uh, I would assume, I don't think any newer players, there's no really guides on this, I don't think, but it's very simple. You just hold R3 on the controller, the right analog stick down. I don't know what this button is on PC, so don't roast me. Uh, definitely just let me know what the, the default key is on PC. I think that theirs looks a little bit different. They can have add-ons or whatever for theirs. So what are some uses to this? Well, firstly, I can mark this guy and see him through trees, through, see him through the ground, okay? It's very big because you can keep on somebody and know exactly where they're going. As long as you stay with when, as long as you stay within a relatively decent range. Um, see, I can still see that man from up here. Um, so, I mean, that's quite a long ways. I mean, that's a very long ways. It's kind of like a vampire ultimate, um, but it's, you know, cars and ultimate. And they don't even know that they're marked either. So that's a very big thing. Um, so besides seeing through walls, I think another big thing is... This helps range magic classes out quite a bit because I can mark this guy and I can see where he's going. Like before, I could only see like his chest. Now I can see his feet. Obviously, I know this guy is an ad, but in PvP, this makes a difference. You know, pe seeing people where they're going and kind of where they're going to be kiting, a line of sighting to. It definitely just helps me keep uh, my my analog stick, my thumbs on their on their forehead, so I can you know damage them and keep uh, on on the target. The only really counter to this is cloak. Um, if this guy were to, you know, do the invisibility morph on the Nine Blade, or if he was to use an invisibility potion, then I would not be able to see him after he comes out of cloak. So that's kind of annoying, but you know, you got you have to assume that that's going to be a reality. Um, again, they don't know if they're marked, so the, you know they don't they're not going to counter it on purpose. But this will definitely help you if you're trying to you know see where somebody's going, whether they're kiting a line of sighting behind rocks and trees and and outposts and stuff like that. Uh, definitely will help you stay in close quarters and see what they're doing and kind of see their their movement and finally i think one of the biggest that any class can really utilize this is to focus focus people out so if i mark this guy and i can see him you know obviously behind the rocks and i can focus this guy out uh i can see where he's going see if he you know dodge rolls and goes behind a tree uh Typically, what that's going to do is you can focus a healer or focus a squishy player in a 1vx. Those are the two main uses that I use that I, that I would use for this personally. It's going to help you to really line up a burst combo because you can see exactly where they are, you know, whether they roll dodge, got out of the way, or, or whatever, and you can really uh, follow them, and they really can't get out of your uh, line of sight. So this is again very trivial. Um, but it's very complex and it can really help you improve your overall gameplay because you can actually see where they're going uh, and can aim accordingly. So for the second tip here, this one's a little bit more complex, but not by too much. So this one's going to be medium weaving. Now this is a lot of scalability for a lot of sets and gear that I really proc off this. We're going to go into that here in a minute, but let's talk about the basics. So what is a medium weave? A medium weave is like 1-1000 one, 1, and then let go of a heavy attack. That's kind of what a medium weave is. So a light attack, you just tap the light attack button. For a heavy attack, you hold it down. And for a medium weave, that's somewhere in between. That's what a medium weave is. So the damage difference between a light attack is less than a medium weave. And the damage difference between a medium weave and a heavy attack is just a little bit. So if you want to deal more damage, a heavy attack is by far the best. But the medium weave is a little bit faster than the heavy. 
and deals a little bit less damage. But there are some properties to the medium weave that the heavy attack has. There's also some properties that the light attack has that the medium attack has. So basically, the medium weave is faster than heavy, but the medium weave can CC. The only way that this can CC, though, is with off balance. So there's several skills that give off balance. The easiest one to explain is Dizzy Swing um, because these ads get stunned whenever I hit them with surprise attacks. So uh, it's a little bit more complex. So let me show you real quick. So if I proc this guy with Dizzy Swing like I did, and if I go a medium weave, he gets knocked on the ground, which is a stun. This affects players. If I will Dizzy Swing and then hit this guy with a light attack, uh, this Timmy guy just sniped him. Um, if I hit this this guy right here with a Dizzy Swing, and then I light attack, he does not get stunned, as you guys see there. Okay? So if I proc this guy off balance like I did there with the block, and I heavy attack, he gets stunned. Okay? Like that. That's a stun. So... Medium weaves, if they are off balance, can proc a stun, which helps you with burst combos. Um, and there's also sets as well that proc, like the Vatron 2H will proc with this. There's also the Devlin's Assassin set that procs with uh, medium weaves. So it adds a lot of burst combos and a lot of burst potential uh, with a medium weave. So let me talk about the burst combo. So we hit our Dizzy Swing, and then we'll like medium weave ultimate. And what this does is they'll be CC'd, knocked on the ground, and they're going to get hit with an ultimate. Now, you can CC with end cap, obviously, I know. But if you're using Dawnbreaker, if you're using any ultimate, you know, that's kind of semi-bursty. Like, even Soul Tether could work here, obviously. But it's just a simple, yeah, effective burst combo that catches people slipping, especially people who are a little bit newer. They get caught by this and can get bursted very, very quickly. So now let me talk a little bit about the Vatron. Now, you guys know that if you hit five five attacks, five stamina abilities while in combat, and you will proc um, the Vatron, okay? So what this does is, let me let me get five stacks real quick. So as you guys will see here, this ad, I'm just gonna medium weave. Vatron procs. Very, very big for PVP, because if you get five stacks that quickly, and you're in combat, just like this, and then you medium weave, and you're in your combo, you can proc that Vatron with like a medium weave surprise attack. So this is why medium weave is so deadly in PvP. The only really classes that can utilize this are 2H dual wield type of specs. Stabs are a little bit more difficult, um, but you still can medium weave. Uh, do I have a staff? I do not. Let me get one from the bank real fast. So a big thing here, lighting stabs can proc off balance with their... Um, whatever you call it, their blockade of storm, but they do not have a medium weave. L lighting heavy attacks do not have a medium weave. They only have a light attack and a heavy attack, and the heavy attack has to fully charge in order to stun uh, a target. So that's a good thing to note. But if we grab a inferno staff real quick, put it on. So let me proc off balance here. So off balance. Now I'm gonna medium weave. So how he got stunned. But again, there's not as many access to um, like good burst combos with a staff because you don't really have access to off balance as easy other than using like conceal weapon on a mag blade. That is the attack. So let me do a heavy attack really quickly on the lightning so I can show you guys very quickly. Dizzy swing. Now, the only way to stun is to do a full charge heavy attack. As you've seen there, he was off balance. Uh, now, there's no medium weave. So it's only heavy attacks, and that's it. That's the only way you can proc off balance is to hold the heavy attack and, and then do the whole animation. You can't just medium weave with a lighting staff. All right, so for the third tip, this one's kind of two tips into one, but the first one's going to be bar swap canceling, and this next one is going to be roll dodge canceling. Now, these have a lot of benefits, especially for magic classes. So bar swap canceling basically is I hit a skill and I bar swap. It's very, very simple. Um, what this does is if I'm spamming like my spammable, okay, I can't hit another skill until my light attack lands. But what I can do is if I hit a light attack, swallow soul, and then bar swap, I can immediately get to my back bar and I can hit another light attack and a skill pretty quickly compared to before. And this will allow me to go defensive. Also, what this allows for us to do is if we proc our five stacks of Merciless, 
we can you know mark and then go lot attack merciless and then we can you know go a little bit defensive there we can always be hitting our hots and uh we can you know bar swap hit a hit a heal bar swap back to offense now the the constant moving back and forth will help you uh to you know bar swap cancel and get your attacks out just a hair faster and keeps your momentum going uh, as you're weaving and kind of gets you in a rhythm and a flow um the next one is going to be roll dodge canceling now let me get five stacks of merciless now typically um, in PvP, you're going to get the most benefit from this once you have a high burst potential skill up. So what will that be? Obviously, Merciless is a very good one because it hits a very, very hard single target and it has a lot of burst potential. But there's other skills like Seafrag for the uh, Sork. There's, I guess, Molten Whip for a DK. You can use this even in melee range. But basically what this is, is you light attack, skill, and roll dodge. So Merciless... You can light attack, skill, roll dodge, wall of soul. And basically all I'm doing is I'm light attack, skill, roll dodging. And I'm roll dodging in the forward direction. So it's a little bit to get used to. You don't want to use this all the time. What this really does is it masks animations. So if you're fighting somebody that's a little bit higher tier player and you're using your merciless and they've been keeping you know roll dodging it constantly and you get them low what you can do is you can roll dodge and shoot that merciless and they won't even see it as you guys can see the regular animation versus that animation is a lot different so we're going to get the merciless up here that's just a regular merciless you can see that coming from a mile away they made it a lot slower and a lot more clunky so we have to be a little bit more um I guess professional with our kind of animations. I don't know the exact word that I'm looking for there. But a lot of attack, roll, dodge, cancel. You don't even see that merciless come out. And this is where a lot of burst potential comes. Also, whenever you roll dodge, you are immune to basically any direct damage that's coming your way. If you roll dodge cancel with, with snipe, and you can basically mitigate damage and burst your target in return rather than taking damage. This is how this is utilized effectively, effectively with max orc because you can hit curse, endless fury, uh, dodge roll, sea frag, and all that's going to go off at once if they get low enough. So that's the main thing here uh, that you can really get a lot of burst potential with very little risk because you're roll dodging not taking damage this is an advanced tip that i think a lot of newer players don't realize or don't know and i think it can really help you out in pvp quite a bit but the next tip this one's a little bit class dependent though but we're going to go through a few classes so the first one is going to be a little bit like movement so it's kind of complicated i know i'm not in pvp right now but we all know uh, some great movement skills are skills like streak shadow image for the night blade you also have gap closers like toppling charge and crit rush that can definitely help you uh, get into a little bit out of sticky situations and can kind of save your life if used correctly but what we're going to talk about here in, in this first little little section is streak now if i was to be on any other class there is no way i can get in this thing but using streak i can streak over and use the forward momentum to be able to hop in this little tube here. And you can't get in here any, any way else. And a streak is the only way. Um, without having to gap close somebody else that, you, that you're that you in a duel with. But regardless, uh, streak can help you get into some crazy spots. And it can help you stay alive and play a little bit defensive. You can get in spots you typically wouldn't be able to. You can... Like, for example, streak over areas, like if, for example, this rock was a little bit higher, you may be able to streak on top of, of that. I mean, maybe not as, as close as that, but regardless, you guys kind of get the point. Streak is very versatile, like I can skip areas here and I can, you know, take a little shortcut. Um, I can streak over things like this and can get closer to, well, I guess if, <laughs> if I could streak, but you guys get the point. Like you're gonna have to swim over that. If I streak, I don't have to swim. It's just a great utility. Uh, and streak is, is such a great skill. It's probably one of the best movement skills in the game because it can get you in places that you normally couldn't get. All right, so now we're on the night blade and we're gonna be talking about shadow image. Now, you, most of you guys know this skill is really amazing, but for those who don't know, um, basically what this skill does is we put this shade down and if we you know are, are within range of the shadow image we can teleport back to it so if we drop down here we're fighting people da -da 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 -da, shadow image back up boom we are out of the fight out from up there or out from down there i should say and we're up here healing buffing back up you know doing our doing our thing up here healing and whatnot 
So this skill is very good for PvP. It gets you out of sticky situations an upteenth million number of times. You can use this to kite people around. You can drop down from this rock, hit it again, and you can go back down here. You can shadow image almost as you're about to hit the ground. And if they all jump off, then you can get back up and they'll all be down there and they can't get back up. The only downside to this is if you got a Zerg on you and they just camp this bad boy because they're going to be sitting here, AoEs down, trap beast, spamming talons, waiting for you to pop out and you're probably going to die. But regardless, if you're fighting people that really don't know how to fight this skill, uh, you can have a lot of fun with them and you can kite them around. You can also drop off of like i guess the bridges in pvp and jump and have people honestly jump into the water as they're falling because if you were to shadow image up and then jump off the bridge you can still shadow image from a decent ways down not all the way but uh it can definitely juke some people out and be really really funny all right so now we're going to talk about a gap closer in toppling charge now it doesn't have quite the valuable movement that shadow image does or streak does but what this has is this can go vertically up and down crit rush is a little bit finicky it's supposed to have the same properties but it doesn't um for the most part sometimes it does but other times it's kind of weird but anyways as you guys can see here these guys are vertically below me and if i'm on top of this thing i can still top and charge them so what this can do is if you're fighting some people on the bottom floor and there's somebody up here you can top and charge them literally from uh from the bottom up to here and can get out of the way so if you're fighting people down here you can top and charge from where i just came from and you'll be able to survive. And if you're fighting people down here and you're taking a lot of pressure and you see some random person up there, you can always top and charge them and get out of a sticky situation. This is that like a, an advanced pro tip for Templars that have some crappy movement. You know, the only movement we have is race against time, but uh, this will definitely help you out in PVP, uh, especially if people are like not super duper high, like not in a castle or a, or a keep like that. But if they're just vertically, just a little bit higher than you, you can always top and charge them, you know, spam a little bit and kind of act up. But for the most part, it'll let you traverse the environment. And for the last and final tip, we have light attack weave with your offensive skills, but also your defensive skills. Again, this is what high players do the most. This is similar to bar swap canceling in a way, but not exactly. So if you're playing the game, and if you're not light attack weaving between every skill, you're doing this game wrong. But especially in PvP, damage is king. So if I was to just hit my heals, okay, and just hit my blast bone here and just hit this, like it's an inherent habit. I can't not hit light attack, okay? So I'm sorry. I can't act like I don't know how to play the games. But here's here's the thing if i just hit my offensive skills uh like clench here like degeneration like i've only done 20 percent, i guess 40 percent damage but if i was to light attack clench that's a lot more damage okay light attacks are the most insane slept on thing you can do in the game high level players perfect this because they're always light attack weaving like when I say offensive and defensive skills, I mean it. Like literally, I will hit light attack, blast bone, light attack, rapid regen, light attack, blast bones, light attack, this, light attack, that, light attack, heal, light attack, elemental weapon, light attack, this, light attack, that. Like I'm not joking. You need a light attack weave between everything because it helps increase your DPS so much. Also, there's a few minor things like shock glyphs that'll proc vulnerabilities. This will proc your enchants. This will proc your poisons. All the whole nine yards. Light attack weaving is the best most important tip i can recommend for newer players uh it's it just gonna help you kill people but also don't forget about your defensive rotations as well like if i'm light attack rapid regening if i'm playing a little bit defensive here i can still deal damage while on my back bar i mean it's not my, it's not that much but if you're in a duel and you're you know kind of playing a little bit defensive here you can still do some damage while playing defensive you don't have to always be in your front bar to be able to kill people I mean, I guess you're not going to kill them with the rest of a light attack if they're if they're any decent, but it's a little bit of damage that makes them have to heal. So it's a little bit less damage you have to deal if you're doing a wombo combo with an ultimate and stuff like that. So that is all for the five secrets that PvPers won't tell you. Now, if you guys have been playing this game for a few years, you guys already know most of these. But hopefully, if you guys are newer, you know you guys just got the game a few you know months ago. These can really help you increase your overall gameplay. They, these are some huge things that will 
make you a lot better player and make you look less like a scrub. And that's kind of my goal for this video is to just make you better. Step by step, you're going to get better regardless. But I think these types of videos can really help you guys get a lot better, quicker and faster. And that's my goal uh, to help you guys out and get better at PvP. So hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys like this video and it helped you anyway, be sure to smash that like button. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.